the Communications Center in Yonkers, New York, this is News and Views, presented by the student broadcasters of the Archdiocese of New York. I'm Jennifer Markey, bringing to you news and views from the front lines of Cardinal Spalman. Our topic today is on the controversial subject of Proposition 48. When was the last time you heard about sports taking precedence over academics in relation to the college admission process? Probably not recently, as the National Collegiate Athletic Association has seen to it that all incoming freshman athletes meet a minimum standard of academics before receiving a scholarship. These academic standards, which are stated in Proposition 48, have been a controversial and well-debated topic that has divided many in the intercollegiate sports world. Proposition 48 was designed to bar Division I colleges from granting scholarships to athletes who do not qualify academically. These standards require a minimum 2.0 grade point average and at least a 700 on the Scholastic Aptitude Test. Our news team has attempted to compile evidence of the effectiveness and appropriateness of the infamous Proposition 48. Julia Ramirez will present the first of three news features that we have prepared for today's show. Julia? Thank you, Jennifer. Some people consider Proposition 48 a step towards reorientating athletes' perspectives in the direction of academics. Others view the proposition as an indecent proposal. Today, we will analyze both sides of this topic. Many agree that the success of the proposition must begin in the high schools. They must do a more sufficient job in educating athletes. These athletes have to realize that scholarships are not as abundant as most students believe them to be. They are extraordinarily competitive. Approximately 1 in 100 high school athletes can expect to receive a college scholarship. A recent survey conducted at the Center for the Study of Sports and Society at Northeastern University revealed that more than 40% of inner-city African-American high school athletes can expect to play professional sports. Unfortunately, only a mere 7 one hundredth of 1% will ever find their way into professional sports. Also, when the few who do, their average career expectancy will last between three and four years. After that, the former athletes will be faced with the same career decisions they should have considered much earlier in their lifetime. To provide more information surrounding this is Jennifer Rivera. Jennifer? Thank you, Julia. The National Collegiate Athletic Association, or NCAA, proposed Proposition 48 after the rising tide of illiterate, uneducated Division I athletes reached an alarming high. The report indicated the NCAA conducted a study based on the graduation rate of athletes to measure the effectiveness of the proposition. The report indicated that the graduation rate of scholarship athletes rose after Proposition 48 was adopted in 1986. The study found that the rate of graduation of scholarship athletes who entered Division I colleges in 1986, the year Proposition 48 was imposed, was six percentage points higher than the average graduation rate of athletes who entered those same colleges three years before the rule took effect. The study concluded that 57% of athletes in the 1986 freshman class graduated within six years, compared to 51% of those who entered college in 1983, 1984, or 1985. When John Cheney, men's basketball coach at Temple University, was asked to comment on the results of the report, he responded, if you want to have a great graduation rate, just keep raising the standards. Luz Mila? Advocates of Proposition 48 insist that the rule forces high schools to give athletes a better academic grounding and help more athletes earn college degrees. By establishing this proposition, the athlete must maintain a minimum 2.0 grade point average. It will provide a more diverse lifestyle than many athletes prior to this proposition were exposed to. It presents the athlete with an academic goal to strive for by maintaining at least a 2.0. Critics of Proposition 48 contest that the proposition unfairly punishes or shuts out of the system athletes who are less prepared academically, including a disproportionate number of black athletes. 
also, there are many suspicions that standardized tests, such as the SATs, are not necessarily accurate gauges of a student's potential to succeed in college. Recent studies show that some people fail to take tests well, but succeed in receiving an adequate education. This fact alone has swayed many people's opinions about the appropriateness of Proposition 48. Thank you for those reports, Julie, Jennifer, and Lucy. In our next segments, we will attempt to show both sides of this controversial topic. Team member Chir Alvarez will be providing the pro side, and Jesus Cosme will provide the opposing view while representing the con side. Chir? The implementation of Proposition 48 was designed to place the emphasis of all college-bound students on learning instead of focusing on other things such as sports. The purpose of a university is to further growth of mind. We must not lose sight of that. Are you insinuating that sports are not important and that they have no relevance in society? No, I am saying that we should accurately decipher the place for learning from the place for sports. In your argument, you neglect to include the unfortunate, economically disadvantaged students who no. did not have the proper resources to educate themselves to the level of college standards. To some, no. an athletic scholarship is the only way in which they can improve to a better lifestyle. Proposition 48 restricts mostly black, underprivileged minorities. It is unjust and biased. You're wrong. Proposition 48 is fair. The SAT requirements to hold 200 points below what the average college-bound senior scores. Also, a mere 700th of 1% of all sports athletes make it to the pros. Jesus, what happens to the other 99.3%? I'll tell you, they're facing the same decision they should have considered much earlier in their lifetime. Your argument defeats the purpose of an athletic scholarship. No, Proposition 48 ensures the athlete that if his career should end, there are other options. Michael Kohler, a graduate from St. John's University, was asked to comment on his experience with the proposition. He replied, many athletes will find that life is not just based on their physical talents. Some will find that they possess abilities that the prop forced them to find. We owe it to the athletes to keep all their options open. Thank you, Chirin Jesus. It is obvious that valid points can be made for both sides of this proposition. So we have invited a guest who, in his job, must constantly deal with the ramifications spurred by Proposition 48. In our next segment, Tonya DiLuozzo will be interviewing our guest, Rich Petruccione. Tonya? Thank you, Jennifer. Our guest today is Rich Petaccione, who is the athletic director at Iona College. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Petaccione. Could you start by explaining what the Clearinghouse system is? The Clearinghouse was established by the NCAA last year to make sure that all student athletes, male and female, mm -hmm. are academically qualified to participate at Division I or Division II. What is your opinion on the effectiveness of the Clearinghouse system? I think it got off to a rocky start, but it's, it's proving rather effective this year. The, the reports come in weekly, and we're seeing a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. Now, based on your opinion, do you feel that the Clearinghouse system will have a positive or a negative outcome? I think it'll have a positive effect because many of the high school students are now learning that they have to get these 13 core courses out of the mm -hmm. way. So we're finding a lot of freshmen and sophomores are making sure they get their core courses done. Can you explain the grading system indifference? Mm -hmm. The grading system is an interesting thing that affects the Catholic high schools particularly because uh, the NCA looks at all grades mm -hmm. from 80 to, to 90, 70 to 80 as one letter grade. I think sometimes it can be unfair because a 78 average would be looked at the same way as a 71 average. Yes. Um, as a graduate of a Catholic high school, so many people believe that the grade point average should be so controversial. Can you elaborate on that? Well, as I was saying, I think that, that, that there are some definite problems about it. We have to look into uh, the Academic Affairs Committee mm -hmm. of the NCAA and see if there's a way that it can be changed. Yes. They don't look at pluses or minuses. And so as a result, a lot of our students in the Catholic high schools mm -hmm. are going to have to score significantly higher on the SATs in order to be eligible as freshmen. Well, I thank you very much for joining us today, Mr. Petrucione. I'm Tony Dulotto for Carlos Spellman's News and Views. Thank you, Tony and Mr. Petrucione. We have attempted to provide a fair representation of how student athletes are affected by Proposition 48 in our previous segments, but we will now present the opinion of our news team in the form of an editorial by team member Shayla Guerra. Shayla? Our team feels that academics should always take precedence over sports. Education is one of the most valuable tools that a person possesses and should be treated as such. 
Also, we believe that learning should be the main focus of every student in college. Proposition 48 has successfully produced evidence of effectiveness and appropriateness in the system. We would like to applaud the efforts of all the members of the NCAA who have worked to improve the intelligence and literacy of Division I athletes. It is admirable to see a program that refuses to capitalize on athletes' talent when he or she is not ready or academically unprepared for college. Proposition 48 was designed to recenter the emphasis of college-bound athletes on learning as opposed to sports. Based on the studies and interviews conducted, we feel that the proposition is producing effective results. We also believe that we will see an increase in the success of Proposition 48 in years to come. In response to the question, Proposition 48, fair or foul? We feel that the answer is a resounding fair. When we first researched this topic, Many team members were unaware of the far-reaching effects of this proposition, but we are now aware of some of the positive and negative factors germane to this rule. We hope that we have made our viewers more aware of a fairly little-known problem facing many prospective college athletes. On behalf of our news team, I'm Jennifer Markey, thanking you for watching our show.